Well, hello there. You're watching the press preview, a first look at what is on the front pages. In the next half hour, then, we'll see what's making the headlines with the Evening Standard columnist, Aisha Hazarika, and the Sun's political editor, Tom Newton Dunn. Welcome to both of you. Hello. Mm -hmm. So to the front pages then, let's take a look, shall we? Metro, first of all, reporting that the grandmother of Novichok poisoning suspect, Dr Alexander Mishkin, unwittingly blew his cover when she proudly showed visitors to her home a photograph of her grandson with Vladimir Putin. The Financial Times carries a warning from the Bank of England that £41 trillion worth of derivatives contracts due to mature after Brexit could be at risk unless regulatory red tape is sorted out. The Guardian has Gordon Brown's comments that Conservative benefits cuts could spark chaos along with a summer of discontent unless Theresa May scraps plans for a national rollout of universal credit. The Eye reports that the NHS needs armies of volunteers to support their exhausted staff and improve patient care. The Express leads with a story about how high property prices are forcing record numbers of young people to live with their parents instead of moving into their own place. The Times stays with young people and they report that alcohol consumption by under 25s is at an, wait for it, all time low, with more young adults choosing to go teetotal than ever before. The Daily Mail goes with Theresa May's announcement that school pupils are to receive mental health checks from their teachers as part of a £1.9 billion plan to overhaul mental health services in schools from the age of four for some of them. The Telegraph talks about the plans by the Royal College of Psychiatrists to review its opposition to the legalisation of cannabis despite their own concerns. And The Sun has that strictly story about comedian Sean Walsh. With the moment he called his girlfriend before being snapped with his Strictly dance partner. While the star has word of a couple accused of belonging to a, a band, even, neo-Nazi group who have chosen to name their child Adolf. Well, Aisha and Tom are here. That is a motley bunch of newspaper front pages, I have to say. Well, you sound disapproving. Well, it's, it's not what we've become used to. Well, no, it's not, but... This is, I don't know how long this has happened, how many years, months, decades this has happened on Sky News pay reviews but we're going to attempt a Brexit-free <laughs> Sky News paper review tonight, which is certainly a first in, in, in my two and a half years since the referendum of, of being here. But remember back in the day, Anna, 2015, 2014, this is what we used to do. We used to... The front page used to come in, there used to be an interesting pick and mix of fascinating stories, like a sweet shop. You never know what you get, and we're now back to that today. OK. So let's start with the first bit of pick and mix. <laughs> uh, so mental health checks for all pupils as young as four in order to counter the, uh, the increase, the massive increase in diagnosable conditions that we've seen in schools. Yeah, so big um, new announcement uh, from the government focusing on mental health, particularly mental health at schools. And there's, you know, experts are saying that mental health problems in young people have increased sixfold after in the last two decades. And one in 10 children now have a condition or a, sister, a, a kind of level of mental health issues which, which needs kind of help. And girls are most at risk with self-harming reported amongst a fifth of those aged 14. So the question is what can be done and there's a whole raft of new proposals. There's an appointment um, of the world's first minister to try and prevent suicide. £1.5 million, £1 million for the Samaritans helpline and a whole slew of other um, recommendations. All of this is very, very important and it is, you know, noble and admirable and the right thing to do, particularly trying to target young people. Mental health awareness is a growing issue for people of all ages, but particularly young people, it's important to teach young people that there isn't any stigma attached with mental health, to give mental health and physical ailments mm -hmm. the same parity. But, and there is always a but with this, there are huge waiting lists right now all over the country for people diagnosed with mental health conditions. Um, in some places, it's over 20 weeks till you can get that assessment. Often people are self-harming or even committing suicide in the time between going to see their doctor and getting an appointment. So it's very good and it's very important, but more needs to be done 
faster. And treatment's miles away often, isn't it, from yeah. families? But th th that's not the only question, though, isn't it? What can be done about it? The other question is what causes it and whether social media mm. and the the fact that school does not end when you get home, yeah. all, all of that influence, whether that has a big impact and whether something needs to be done about that too. Yeah, and, and studies repeatedly show that the pressure on, on especially, you know, teenage, young mm. teenagers and teenage girls uh, is extreme these days and far higher than ever used to be, largely driven by social media, driven by this, this terrible urge to have a million likes a day on Instagram, uh, and the peer pressure you have, you're surrounded by 24 hours a day if you, you have a smartphone and you take it home with you, of all your friends looking happy and beautiful and, mm. and, and permanently sort of you know, doled up on, on Instagram and mm. you're sat at home miserable without a boyfriend or a, or a girlfriend. Uh, so clearly today's mm. you know, digital advances are, are affecting all this. Some of the things the government are doing, it is good, and this is all, of course, is World Mental Health Day tomorrow, and this is why a whole raft of things are, are being announced. Some things we knew about, for example, uh, teaching in classrooms and awareness courses for teachers, especially to, to catch this, has been announced before. Uh, a Minister for Suicide Prevention hasn't been announced before. I personally am a little bit sceptical uh, when the government announces new ministerial titles right. like this. It sort of begs the question, well, what on earth were the government ministers doing uh, in the Department for Health before when they, their responsibilities absolutely should have included you know suicide and suicide prevention mm. a minister for loneliness was created by Theresa may six months or so back if you remember um that minister for loneliness hasn't exactly cured loneliness yet so it, it, there can be a trend towards gimmickiness but real action especially you know money in classrooms and absolutely yeah. more help to, to to balance out this huge pressure from social media is Hugely welcome. But th there's always the pressure, isn't there? Certainly on NHS budgets and elsewhere. That if the if if they can't cope with the physical illness that people have, how are you going to cope and add into it the mental health too? At uh, the Times, continuing a sort of a, a, a young person's theme, really. A third of mm. under 25s now drink no alcohol. Back in the day, it wasn't so, I think, probably. But uh, this is interesting, isn't but it? Supposedly, I'm, I'm sure we should be welcoming this. I'm, I'm sure this is a good thing that young people uh, are no longer falling over in droves on a Friday night or mm. any night of the week because they're uh, drinking themselves silly. If I'm being terribly old-fashioned and dinosaur-like, I slightly remember not. that as a bit of a... <laughs> no, I, it surprises you I would be <laughs> such a thing. But I slightly remember that as a bit of a, of, a, of a rite of passage. Isn't that what young people do? Don't we experiment? Drinking to ridiculous success clearly uh, mm. is wrong, but teetotaling, a third of young people teetotaling. And the answer is they're doing this because they all live in a virtual world. Again, sound like some old grandpa. You're saying they're staying indoors? They do, and that, again, surveys have, have proved this. They stay indoors, they live in a virtual world, they're on Instagram, they're communicating with each other, which means they don't feel a mass need to go Come out on, and drink cider in the park. The pub. Have you seen how many pubs are closing? Anyway, yeah. not, They're not I allowed mean, in pubs, of course. Yeah, well, that's but, so, very true, yes. I, th I think social media does have a part to play in it. I just think um, also one of the things that I found, particularly okay, I've been doing yeah. my, um, you know, going in to do sort of gigs and stuff at universities, because people are really getting themselves into a lot of debt at university They can't as afford well. it. Also, they've slightly changed the attitude. Like, when I went mm. to university, it was a bit of a... You went to university with a free education to do a bit of learning, but to have a good time. And actually, I think young people, because of, you know, they're making a financial choice to go to university, they know they're going to be in debt for quite a long time. They're kind of more responsible in a way that we might have not been when we were at university. The other thing about social media is that I think quite a lot of young people are thinking, hang on a minute, do I want to get photographed on and, and permanently have a record on social media of being really drunk? Because that is the kind of thing which does affect your reputation, you know, down the track. So I think in a way, young people are having to be a bit more sort of sensible than we were because Things are a bit sort of yeah. tougher for them now. There are so many people who have their Facebook profile, their Twitter profile, Instagram, you name it, checked before they're offered jobs now. It's amazing. Or they isn't lock it, it down or <clears throat> something like that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, While well, staying with intoxication, I guess, Daily Telegraph, Cannabis Review uh, could relax drug laws. So who's making this decision? The Royal College of Psychiatrists, not quite making it, but they're no. uh, recommending beginning a big review into whether or not cannabis should be decriminalised. Not legalised, slightly different, decriminalised. Uh, which basically means the possession of cannabis is no longer a crime. Dealing cannabis certainly still would be. And they're doing this largely because huge chunks of the world have already done it. Canada uh, decriminalised cannabis a few weeks ago. Uh, I've lost count the amount of US states that have done it now. It's probably up to 20 or 30. I'm sure I'll get corrected on Twitter instantaneously. Uh, but there is a big shift. South American countries are doing this. So th there is a, a world movement towards decriminalising cannabis. And the Co Royal College of Psychiatrists, who are not the government, the government have been hard over 
uh, on, on their belief, in my view, wrongly, that to touch the drug laws is to somehow admit huge electoral fallibility. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's the Royal College of Psychiatrists who, after all, cannabis mm -hmm. and the great... You know, cannabis is not hard drugs. It's not cocaine or heroin. It's not, you know, as addictive as some things. It's not as physically damaging as other drugs. But mm -hmm. mentally, it is, you know, a, a potential problem. The fact that these people are now looking into is, you know, the, the very body who mm -hmm. we trust with decisions on mental health, and if they come out the other end of it, and say, do you know what, actually, maybe there's another way of doing this rather than just trying to arrest people, we should look down this route, then that would be a very big moment. Mm, despite previous warnings of psychoses in some people who take it, for example, but uh, you were going to say... Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm slightly in ag agreement with um, Tom. In Portugal is the other country which is sort of in Europe yeah. that has done it, and actually there was a sort of spike in usage, and then it's actually sort of, over time, it looks like it's, it's levelled off and is reasonably sensible. For me, I think the big problem about why we need to look at it is crime. So many young, particularly men, get caught up in this and they end up going to prison. I mean, I went to a visit in Brixton prison recently. It's just full of young men who's, who got mixed up with the wrong people, did some drugs, ended up dealing, and now their lives are, are ruined because they just become harder criminals when they're inside. With, with so mental I, health problems. Yes, with Huge mental health problems. Absolutely, with with, health absolutely. Problems. and I do think you know, we're not winning this war on drugs. In certain areas, police will tell you they do end up turning a bit of a blind eye to it. So I think we've got to try a different approach. Although Harriet that. Sargent, also of this parish on the, uh, the press preview, who has done a lot of work with gangs, said if they didn't trade in cannabis, they would be trading in something else. So, you know, sure. and, and the in, same in... issues would arise in terms of the conflict, the stabbings you see over, you know, £10 quantities and things like that well, that we've seen recently. in which case, you know, decriminalise the, the, the loss of drugs, I think is the obvious answer to that, because you find which it Which will never hard. happen under a Conservative government, would it? Not necessarily, no. Remember, the former Conservative Prime Minister, David Cameron, when he was a member of the Home Affairs mm. Select Committee way back in 2001, yeah. I think it was, came out in favour of, of looking at all this. And th this all comes down to mm. one big question. Clearly, it makes complete sense to decriminalise drugs which would rid the entire criminal element to drug consumption, drug dealing, which would take vast amounts of, of, of money, you know, off the street into the legal economy. You'd save huge amounts of money on policing, etc. Mm. The only question that should remain on this entire debate is, does decriminalising drugs increase usage yeah. or not? OK. And if you come up with the answer, no, then quite frankly, it's a slam dunk. Uh, schools to monitor their pupils' happiness, also on the front of the Telegraph. Inside the mail to, to the world's first minister for suicides, it says new role aims to end the stigma attached to seeking mental help. So many of the newspapers going on that story that we started with. Plenty more still to come in the second part of our programme, including Donald Trump's ambassador to the UN, says an amicable goodbye, but is everything as it seems? Well, welcome back. You're watching the press preview with me now, Aisha Hazarika and Tom Newton Dunn. Let's go straight to the Metro. Gran blows spies cover. Um, it makes it sound almost hilarious, doesn't it? But this is really serious, isn't it? These proved it's by according to Bellingcat that they were GRU and honoured by President Putin. Uh, absolutely, a brilliant piece of exposure by the Bellingcat website today. I was at the press conference mm. uh, hosted by an MP in the House of Commons, exposing not just Alexander Mishkin, the identity of this uh, doctor, Doctor Death. The GRU officer, who was a, a trained doctor who was sent to Salisbury to kill someone, uh, but his full, extraordinary detailed biographical background, including the fact he was brought up in this tiny little village uh, near Archangel, right up in northern Russia, sort of almost within the Arctic Circle, north of, further north than, than Finland. Uh, his granny uh, is the uh, story that the, the Metro focus on, a wonderful sort of tangent to all this. Uh, which is that he was finally identified when they tracked down his, uh, these reporters tracked down his little home village, got there to discover this story that his granny had, had would show everybody in the village this picture of, of her beloved grandson, the killer, Dr. Death himself, with Putin, as Putin was awarding him this great medal, the, the hero of the, the Russian Federation medal. So they went to knock on Granny's door, and guess what? Granny has disappeared. The GRU, it would appear, in a bit to sort of hide any sort of trace of this guy, have, have done away with Granny, which therefore means they need to be renamed the, the Granny Removal Unit, rather than... They might have re rehoused her to a plush place, because obviously, you know... They probably have. Produced son and all carpe that. diem, carpe granny <clears throat> is what I say. If, what, if, if, um, an open, if they look at open source media, this investigative body, Bellingcat, is this what the spooks are doing too? 
Why, why is it coming out? So, a huge what? debate on how much help Bellingcat have had from MI6. Do you and, think they have and, had and help? The like. Well, they deny it. We'll ask them all that today. They deny it. Uh, they have... They, and they, they set out to us in some granular detail precisely how they put all these fascinating bits of the jigsaw together from largely open source material, telephone mm -hmm. books, etc. Not everything they have was from open source. And to me, maybe not knowingly, but I suspect somewhere, perhaps entirely unknowingly, they've had a nudge from somewhere because it's entirely in the intelligence agency's interests mm. to have this all exposed and humiliated. And they've done a very, very good job of doing just that. Yes, hiding in plain sight on digital media. It's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Uh, let's move on to Nikki Haley, uh, Donald Trump's most senior woman in his administration, quitting. We wonder why. Could Ivanka take his place? She would be dynamite, Mr Trump said tonight. Well, this was an extraordinary um, resignation, a real shock as well. I mean, it came as a shock um, in the White House as well. Nikki Haley, one of his most kind of trusted female figures, seen as a, as a moderate, but still very much told the, the line in terms of what Trump says sort of goes. Lots of speculation about why she has resigned. She herself said, as she sat next to the president, that I am not planning to run and I will be supporting Mr President um, when he sort of tries to seek re-election. But there's lots of speculation even swirling around this newsroom. And one of the theories that's been promulgated is perhaps she won't run against him, but maybe he will nominate her potentially to be his running mate. Tom doesn't agree. No, I'm going for the, the, the full, the full <laughs> top job, President. In Nikki, not Nikki Haley for President. No, 2020. I, a, I Trump, the, do the Republican she... Party really want Trump for another four years? Maybe they'd like to see the wagon. She's highly presentable. She's a, a very, very impressive operator. Uh, B, is he even going to get to Trump? Also, remember. He may be impeached. They need someone just in case. I don't think he's. I'll tell you what, she'd beat him. I don't think she. Not with the base. I think you, you forget Trump's base is so unbelievably loyal to him. Mm. Even the GOP have a problem with that. As much as they don't like him, the GOP might prefer. Nikki Haley, mm. but his base is very much about him. OK, midterms coming up, obviously. Uh, lots of coverage as we head to that. Mm. Meanwhile, Sean Walsh very quickly in The Sun, first of all, and in the inside pages of the uh, Daily Mail. Well, so Strictly Snogging is kind of now carrying on. It's like sort of day three of this. And the BBC have said that they are going to be doing their dance mm. on Saturday night, although apparently the, the, it's not going to be a very... Uh, romantic dance. They, it's going to be something. Jazz hands. It's a polka standoff at 50 <laughs> paces. Maybe they'll come uh, in clown suits or something yeah. like that. But Very quickly. Said, the Daily Mail's headline: BBC brace for backlash of shame stars dance on rubbish. They're going to get a record yeah. audience on Saturday because everybody's going to watch them dance. Yeah. And no matter how far apart, it's going to be gripping viewing. Yeah, people have been measuring that distance, aren't they? We'll see you at half eleven for more. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> to the weather now.